stress. Stress? What is stress? Hi, my name is Shia, and I am the camp director at Camp Coping Skills, where we teach healthy ways to deal with stress. We decided to ask kids your age what they think stress is. How would you describe stress? Bad feelings. I'm scared. If someone is stressed, they're like angry or they're just tired. Stress is when you are just not feeling good about something like you made a mistake. Have you ever felt stressed? Yes, I have. I feel stressed usually when I do a tough math problem. Stress-producing thought and emotions affect everyone of all ages in different ways. Stress is the body's reaction to changes in our life that might make us feel different emotions. Stress can be helpful sometimes, and not so helpful other times. A little stress can help you to stay alert and motivate you. It doesn't have a negative impact on your mind or body, but... Stress can also make you experience a range of not-so-fun emotions like anger, sadness, and worry. What are some things you might worry about? Schoolwork? Family members? Friendships? What do you do when you are worried about something? If I have a bad shape, I get worried it might be real, but then I think, is this real? I pace back and forth, and my heart is beating, like, really fast. How do you react? I would want to go hide, probably. When I'm worried, I try to make it go away, and I stay still. What does your body feel like? My heart pumps fast when I am worried, and my belly gets all, ugh, blah. It feels like I'm scared. What are some things that might make you angry? Your brother or sister taking your favorite toy without asking? Your parents telling you that you can't play with your friends after school? What do you do when you're angry? I want to go and get something. Go to my bedroom and shut the door. I go to my room and close the door and take breaths. When I am angry, I stomp and I yell and I want to punch something. How do you react? I stomp and I feel mad. Really, 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 really mad. I want to scream and yell and hit something. I get really upset and I start yelling sometimes. What does your body feel like? Mad. It feels like I'm really mad. My mouth wants to shout out, like, really mean words. What are some things that might make you sad? Your best friend moving away? Your soccer game getting rained out? What do you do when you're sad? I start to cry, and then I go into my room. Play my switch. When I'm sad, I usually cry a lot, and I want my blankie. How do you react? I would probably want to be with my parents. When I'm sad, I like to cry a lot. What does your body feel like? I feel droopy all of a sudden, and I don't want to do anything. Like, I'm not excited. Tired and upset. It feels like it's going to explode, like it just feels weird. Sometimes it is hard for us to feel those feelings without getting overwhelmed. It's important to listen to our bodies. We're going to have your adult pause the video now so you can discuss different feelings and emotions you have experienced in the past and the event that triggered those feelings and emotions. Then, when your adult is ready, we're going to have you watch the next part of the video. Welcome back. I hope you are able to review some of the emotions you feel when you're stressed and how it affects your thoughts, moods, and actions. Now I will teach you a game called Pump the Brakes, 
which we like to use at Camp Coping Skills when we have tough decisions to make. It's a good way to figure out how to problem solve and think through choices that you can make in difficult and sometimes scary situations. You can even use them to role play with your teacher, guardians, or friends. When I give you a situation, first stop, like a red light, and brainstorm all the choices you could make. Then I want you to think, with caution, like the light is yellow, about all the possible outcomes of the different choices and what the outcome of those choices could be. Finally, choose, like you would at a green light, what your decision is or the action you will take. When you have your choice, say green light. Does everybody understand? All right, let's get started. First of all, it's very important to know that sometimes you can do things to reduce the negative stress in your life. Yes, you. You have some ways to control that type of stress. If you have too many activities going on at once, like gymnastics, piano, soccer, chess club, talk to your parents about only doing one or two outside of school time. If you are having trouble understanding a song you have to play for piano lessons, talk to your piano teacher about your confusion. They can help you work through the issue. If you're having trouble learning a play being run at football practice, talk to your coach. He or she can help you break down what you're not understanding. In these type of situations, you can help yourself reduce your worries or stress. Other times, you might not have any control over some of life's situations. You do have control over how you choose to react to them, though. Let's say your dog gets lost and you can't find him. That's pretty stressful, right? How do you think you would feel? You would probably feel many different types of emotions. Scared, sad, worried, maybe even angry. First, you should stop, like at a red light, and figure out what you can do to help yourself deal with the situation and your emotions. In other words, figure out what is in your control and make a plan. Think with caution, like a yellow light. What are some actions you could do to help change the situation? You could make a missing dog sign with helpful information to get your dog back and put it around the area where you live. You could ask your parents to share information about your dog with their friends and neighbors. You could even ask your trusted adult to go on a walk with you around the area looking for your dog. Also, with an adult's help, you might call local dog shelters to see if anyone has found your dog or took your dog there. Then, as you do at a green light, choose which direction you want to take or what decision you want to make. In this case, you could do all of these ideas. Sometimes in tricky situations, though, you will have to decide on doing only one action and quickly. As you can see, there are some things that you can do to have control over unwanted feelings or situations. In a minute, your teacher will pause the video for a few minutes at a time. The teacher will tell you what group you will be in to brainstorm some ways you might be able to control your stress in the following different stressful situations. Please remember to use the pump the brakes strategy of stop, think, and then choose. Situation 1. At bedtime, you realize you lost your favorite stuffed animal at the park. What are some steps you can take to deal with this type of stress? Or what is a plan of action that you can make? Please take some time to discuss in your small group. Then, your teacher will have you share out how you use the stoplight to guide your thinking and problem solving. Situation two, your $10 you had saved for a long time to buy a new toy fell out of your pocket on the way to the toy store. Now you don't have any money. What are some steps you can take to deal with this type of stress? Please take some time to discuss in your small group. Situation three, your mom promised you weeks ago she would take you to get your favorite ice cream as a treat for learning your addition facts. When you finally reach that goal, you get to the ice cream place 
only to learn that they run out of your favorite flavor. They won't be getting it back in stock for a while. What are some steps you can take to deal with this type of stress? Please take some time to discuss in your small group. Welcome back. Even doing all those helpful tasks or trying those ideas might not get your dog back to you immediately. Your stuffed animal, your lost money, or magically create your favorite flavor of ice cream. In the meantime, you might still think about your missing dog, stuffed animal, toy, or ice cream situation so much that you can't pay attention in school. You might even have trouble sleeping. We have some good news to share today though about how to deal with those big emotions like worry, sadness, and even anger. Today at Camp Coping Skills, you are going to learn a few ways of how to use some positive, healthy coping skills when you feel stressed. The first activity we're going to try are some deep breathing techniques, which are calming coping skills. Let's take a walk to the relaxation station. The first skill I will show you is how to do deep breathing with shapes. Let's use a square for example. First, we will start at the bottom of the square where it says start here. We will follow the directions that are on the square. Please practice along with me while I demonstrate how this works. Ready? Let's go. Breathe in for four seconds. Hold that breath in for four seconds. Breathe out slowly for four seconds and hold for four seconds. You can repeat this as often as you need. Let's try it a few more times. Breathe in for four seconds. Hold that breath in for four seconds. Breathe out slowly for four seconds and hold for four seconds. Breathe in for four seconds. Hold that breath in for four seconds. Breathe out slowly for four seconds and hold for four seconds. Now, let's try another one. Pull your arms up as you breathe in and bring your arms down as you breathe out. Let's practice that again a few times. Come on, stand up and try it with me. Breathe in for four seconds. Hold that breath in for four seconds. Breathe out slowly for four seconds and hold for four seconds. Breathe in for four seconds. Hold that breath in for four seconds. Breathe out slowly for four seconds and hold for four seconds. And in the future when you are home, you can blow bubbles to reduce stress. When you're blowing bubbles, it is a great way for you to slow down your body, your thoughts, and your emotions. You have to have good control over your breathing in order to make bubble blowing work. Could you feel how the deep breathing helped to calm your body and help you to deal with your emotions better? Now, your adult may want to pause the video for a few minutes for you to discuss as a class what your favorite breathing technique that you learned today is before moving on to the final part of this video. Maybe your leader will have some volunteers demonstrate it for the front of the class. Welcome back to Camp Coping Skills. In a bit, we're going to head over to Destination Distraction. The first distraction coping skill we're going to focus on today is something you have probably done for years already. Coloring. Yes, coloring is a great way to help you take your mind off of what is bothering you. By focusing your attention on something else other than thinking about what is causing you stress. In this case, Coloring can help you quiet your mind. You might even like putting on calming music while you do it. 
The next distraction strategy we're going to learn about involves an ice cube. Yes, you heard that right. You can use an ice cube to distract yourself. This technique can help you get your attention off of your worry. Next time you're worried about something and need to distract yourself, take out an ice cube from your freezer and hold it in your hand for as long as you can, even if you have to put it on a paper towel. Then place the ice cube in your other hand. It is impossible for your brain to continue thinking about your worry when holding something as cold as ice. The third distraction strategy I'm going to share with you has to do with some furry friends. Playing and cuddling with a pet is a great way to distract your mind. I bet you may have already used this without even realizing it. Playing with a furry friend can help you get your mind off of your worries. Even if you don't have a furry pet, you can read to one of your fish, frogs, or other pets housed in a tank. If you have a trusted adult around and willing, they may even be able to take you to a local pet store or shelter to play with some of the furry animals there. This is also one of my favorite coping strategies. Writing a story or reading is another way to distract yourself from situations in your life that you can't control. I've always enjoyed reading and writing, but reading when I'm worried or sad or angry can help me to give my mind a break and escape to a whole new world. When I'm sad or worried, I like to read books that are funny and make me laugh. Sometimes I get so distracted with reading a book that I lose track of time. I like to find a cozy, quiet spot and curl up with a good book. Or when you're needing a distraction, sometimes it's helpful to do some writing. Not all of us enjoy reading. Writing might be more our thing. You can make up a story about anything. You can plan your next birthday party. You can even make a list of what you are thankful for each day. Writing is a great way to focus your thoughts on something other than your problems. Well, it's almost time to leave camp coping skills for the day. But before we do, let's have a quick review of what we talked about today. First, we talked about stress and what it is. We said stress is the body's reaction to changes in our life that might make us feel different emotions. What kind of emotions could you feel from stress? Sad, worried, angry, and many more. We talked about how stress can be good or bad too. Sometimes it helps us to run faster and pay attention better. Other times it can make us worry, angry, or sad. We discussed that sometimes in your life when you are stressed about something, you can have some control over reducing your stress. We shared the pump the brakes model for making difficult decisions and problem solving. We talked about having healthy coping strategies to deal with our big emotions when we feel overwhelmed. We talked about deep breathing techniques like square breathing. We talked about using our arms to help remind us to breathe in and out slowly. And finally, we talked about breathing like we do when we blow bubbles. Lastly, we shared some ways we can distract ourselves from our worries by coloring, reading, writing, holding an ice cube in our hand, and cuddling with a pet. Well, campers, thanks for coming to camp today to learn healthy ways to deal with stress. I hope the next time you feel stressed, you try out some of the calming strategies instead of letting your big emotions and worries control you.